Lesson number 34, Surat Al-Baqarah, Ayah number 253 to 260. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma. Allahumma faqihna fi al-deen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna ittiba'ah. Wa arina al-batila batilan warzuqna ijtinabah. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama hadaytana lil-islam. Wa allamtana al-hikmata wal-qur'an. وسلوات الله وسلامه على خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين اللهم اجعلنا ممن اتبع القرآن فساقه وقاده إلى الجنة ولا تجعلنا ممن اتبع القرآن فزقها في خفاه إلى النار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار How are you all? I hope you are doing well. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you all in his protection and safety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to learn, practice and convey the Quranic commands in the best of ways. Ameen. Today's lesson, our lesson number 34 today is from verse 253 to 260. We will start with word to word translation and after that the words will be explained according to the grammar and then inshallah there will be tafsir. Let's listen to the word-to-word translation from ayah number 253 to 216. A'uzu billahi minash Tilka, that, or those, ar rusulu the messengers, faddalna, fi favored, preferred, exalted, ba'dahum, some of them, ala, upon, ba'd, some of others, minhum, from among them, Man, whom, kallama, he spoke, Allahu, Allah, wa, and, rafa'a, he raised, ba'dahum, some of them, darajat, in degrees, ranks, wa, and, atayna, we gave, Isa, Isa, Jesus, ibn, Maryam, son of Maryam. al bayinat the proofs or signs, clear, explicit, self-evident. Were and ayyadnahu, we strengthened, supported, gave helping hand to him. Biruh, with ruh or spirit, al Qudus, the of the Qudus, holy. Were and lau, if sha Allahu, he willed Allah, ma did not. Iqtatala, he fought with each other. Alladina, those who min are from ba'dihim after of them min from ba'di after ma of that ja'athum it or she came to them al bayyinat from the proofs signs clear explicit self evident walakin but ikhtalafu they differed with each other faminhum so from among them man who amana he believed were and Minhum is from or among them, man who kafar, he denied, disbelieved or hid the truth. Wa and law if sha'a he willed Allahu Allah ma not iqtatalu, they fought with each other. Wa and lakinna but Allah Allah yaf'alu he does ma whatever you read he wants. Ya ayyuha, O you, alladina, those who amanu, they believed. Anfiqu, you all spend. Mimma, from whatever. Razaqnakum, we provided risk sustenance to you all. Min, from, qabli, before, an, of that. Ya'ati, ya'atiya, it comes, yawmun, a day. La, not, bay'un, any bargaining, fihi, in it. Wa, and, la, nor, Khullatun, any friendship. Wa and la nor shafa'ah, any intercession. Wa and al kafiruna, those who deny, disbelieve, hide the truth. Whom they al zalimun, alone are those who are unjust or do wrong. Allahu, Allah, la not ilaha, any ilah deity or God, illa is except huwa, he. Al hayyu, alone is. Uh, the f- the fount of 
all being ever living al qayyum and the self subsisting everlasting established la does not ta'khudhu it takes or ceases him sinatun any drowsiness wa and la nor naum any sleep lahu is only for him ma whatever fi is or in as samawat the skies heavens heights wa and ma whatever fi is in al ard the earth man who the is that alladhi who yashfa'u he intercedes indahu near or with of him illa except bi idni is with permission ya'lamu he knows ma whatever baina is between aydihim their hands in front of them wa and ma whatever khalfahum is behind of them wa and la not yuhituna they will encompass and circle bi shay'in with anything min from ilmihi his knowledge illa except bima with what sha'a he built wasi'a it extended or spread kursiyuhu his kursi chair authority as samawati the heights skies or heavens wa and al ard the land earth wa and la does not you uh, yauduhu it tires varies fatigues him hifzuhuma guarding of them too wa and huwa he al aliyu alone is the most high exalted al azim the and the always most great supreme la not ikraha any compulsion fi is in ad din the divine din religion way of life qad in fact tabayyana it became clear or explicit ar rushdu the right way rectitude min from al ghay the error string faman so whoever yakfur he denies bit taghuti with the uh, false taghut false deities those worshiped other than allah wa and yu'min he believes billahi in with allah faqad then in fact istamsaka he grasped held firmly bil urwati with the handle or handhold al wuthqa the firm or strong la not in fisama any breaking laha is for it or her wa and allahu allah samiun is one always all hearer alimun and one always all knower Allahu Allah waliyu alone is guardian friend close protecting alladheena of those who amanu they believed yukhrijuhum he takes out them min from azulumat the darknesses ila to or towards annur the nur light wa and alladheena those who kafaru they disbelieved denied hid truth awliyauhum their awliya guardians friends close protecting at-taghut the um, art the taghut false deities those worshiped other than allah yukhrijunahum they take out them min from an-nur the la- nur or light ila to towards az-zulumat the darknesses ulaika those ashabu our companions an-nar of the hellfire whom they fiha are in it khalidun as ones who abide dwell eternally alam did not tara you see or look ila to at alladhi who had he argued disputed ibrahim ibrahim abraham fi in concerning rabbihi his rabb sustainer and that atahu he gave him allahu allah al mulk the kingdom kingship authority is when qala he said ibrahim ibrahim abraham rabbi my rabb sustainer alladhi alone is who yuhyi he gives life wa and yumitu he gives death qala he said ana i uhyi i give life wa and wa and umit i give death qala he said ibrahim ibrahim abraham fa inna so indeed allah allah yati he comes or brings bishamsi 
um, the, with the sun min from al mashriqi the east fati so you come or bring biha with it min from al maghrib the west fabuhita so he was made to be astonished dumbfounded alladhi who kafar he denied he truth disbelieved wa and allah allah la does not yahdi he guides al qauma the nation people az zalimin those who are unjust do wrong aw or kalladhi like who marra he passed ala upon qaryatin a town wa while here it or she khawiyatun is one fallen down overturned ala upon urushiha its roofs or tops qala he said anna how or when yuhyi he will bring to life hadhihi this allahu allah ba'da after mautiha of its or her death fa amatahu so he gave death caused to die him allahu allah mi'ata a hundred amin of years thumma then ba'atha he raised resurrected him qala he said kam how long or much labista you remained or stayed qala he said labistu i stayed or remained yawman a day aw or ba'da a part yawmin of a day qala he said bal rather or ne labista you remained or stayed me at a hundred amin of years fanzur so you look or see ila to add ta'amik your food wa and sharabik your drink lam did not yatasanna it ages spoils or rots wa and unzur you look or see ila to at himarik your donkey wa and linaj'alaka so that we make you ayatan a sign linnasi for the mankind people wa and unzur you look or see ila to at al azam the bones kaifa how nunshizuha we raise put together it thumma then naksuha we clothe it or her lahman with flesh falamma so when tabayyana it became clear explicit self evident lahu to or for him qala he said alamu i know anna indeed allah allah ala is upon kulli all or every shay'in of things qadir one always all able powerful omnipotent wa and is when recall qala he said ibrahim ibrahim or abraham rabbi oh my rabb sustainer arini you show me kaifa how to he you will give life al mauta the ones dead qala he said awalam did and not to mean you believe qala he said bala why not walakin but li yatmainna so that definitely it be satisfied content qalbi my heart qala he said fa khud then you take arbaatan four min from among at-tayri the birds fasurhunna then you tame incline them ilayka towards you thumma then ij'al you put ala upon kulli each every all jabalin of mountain minhunna from them juz'an a portion thumma then ud'uhunna you call them ya'tinaka they will come to you sayan running wa and i'lam you know anna indeed allah allah azizun is always almighty hakim and always all wise grammatical analysis congratulations to all of you alhamdulillah we have started the third just today may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your efforts i hope you have a good understanding of the grammar pronouns nouns verbs and tenses by now inshallah it will get even better with practice now let's understand the words according to grammar tilka that those or these it is isme shara wahid muannas baid feminine singular far demonstrative noun baid is used for far and translation should be those but it is translated as these baid is used here to demonstrate respect and thus the meaning is these 
ar rusulu the messengers root word is ra seen lam it is musharun ilai pointed noun that is the one which is being pointed at by ismishara demonstrative noun ar rusulu is jama mukassar broken plural its singular is rusulun since jama mukassar is mu'annas feminine the tilka ismishara is feminine demonstrative noun is used faddalna we favored preferred exalted root word is fa dad lam it is fa'il madhi jama mutakallam first person plural past tense from faddala you faddilu the verbal noun or masdar is tafdilan that is to prefer or favor tafdilan is in the pattern or wazan of babe taf'il our arabic grammar lesson number 35 this time is also about babe taf'il lesson link will be given in the description box please watch that as well ba'dahum some of them ba'da is mudaf what is possessed whom in the end is mudaf ilay possessor and it is the dhameer of jama musakkar ghaib third person masculine plural pronoun ala ba'd upon some of others min whom is from among them min is harf e jar preposition whom is majroor genitive noun the word following harf e jar preposition is called majroor genitive noun man kallam allah whom he spoke allah Man is isma mausul relative pronoun. Kalama root word is kaf lam mim. It is fail madi wahid mudakkar ghaib third person masculine singular past tense. From kalama you kalimu the verbal noun must there is takliman that is to speak. In other words, it is not necessary to have a two sided conversation. Even if one person is talking, it is called kalam speech. Warafa and he raised. Wa is harfaat. Conjunction root word is ra fa ain. It is fail madi wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular past tense. It is in the pattern of fa ala. The mudari present tense for rafa is yarfau and its masdar verbal noun is rafan that is to raise. Baadahum some of them darajatin in degrees ranks. Root word is dal ra jim. Its singular is darajatun. wa atayna and we gave root word is hamza ta ya it is fa'il madhi jama mutakallam first person plural past tense from ata yu'ti the verbal noun masdar is ita on that is to give isa bin maryam isa jesus son of uh, uh, maryam mary isa is hazrat isa alayhi salam ibn is the root word is ba noon ya ibn means a son al bayyinati the proofs of science clear explicit self evident root word is ba ya noon it starts with al hence it is ism ma'rifa proper noun its singular is bayyinatun that is a sign or a miracle wa ayyadnahu and we strengthened supported gave helping hand to him ayyadna is fa'il madhi jama mutakallam first person plural past tense from ayyada you ayyidu the verbal noun masdar is ta'id uh Ta'id, that is to help and support. Who in end is the mere of Wahid Mudakkar Ghaib, third person masculine singular pronoun. Biru Hil Khudus with Ruh or spirit of the Khuds, holy. It means Hazrat Jibril alayhi salam. B is her future preposition. Ruhi is the root word is Ra, Wow, Ha, and Al Khudus the root word is Khaf, Dal, Sin. It is Majroor genitive noun. ولو شاء الله and if he willed Allah لو is شرطية condition particle شاء root word is شين يا همزة it is فعل ماضي واحد مذكر غائب third person masculine singular past tense from شاء يشاء the verbal noun of مصدر is مشيئة that is to will because of لو the meaning is he willed مقتتلا did not he fought with each other root word is قاف تا لام ما is نافيا negative particle اقتتلا is فعل ماضي واحد مذكر غائب third person masculine singular past tense from اقتتلا يقتتلو the verbal noun مصدر is اقتتالون that is to fight because of لو the meaning is they fought with each other الذين those who it is اسم موصول جمع مذكر masculine plural relative pronoun mim ba'dihim are from after of them ba'di is majroor genitive noun him is dhameer pronoun mim ba'di from after ma ja'at hum of that it or she came to them ma is masdariya subordinating conjunction ja'ahum root word is jim ya hamza ja'at is fa'il madhi wahid mu'annas ghaib third person 
feminine uh, singular past tense. From ja yajiu, the verbal noun masdar is majiun, that is to come. Hum in the end is the mere pronoun. Al bayinatu from the proof, science, clear, explicit, self-evident. Walakin, but. It is harfa mushabba bil fail, particle resembling verb. Ikhtalafu, they differed with each other. Root word is kha, lam, fa. It is fail maadi, jamma muzakkar ghaib, third person masculine plural, past tense. For ikhtalafa yakhtalifu, the verbal noun is ikhtilafan, that is to differ. Fa min hum, so is from among them. Fa is harfa atf. Prefixed conjunction. Min is her figure. Preposition. Whom is the mere pronoun? Man amana. Who he believed. Man is isma mausul. Relative pronoun. Amana is felmadi. Wahid muzakkar ghaib. Third person masculine singular past tense. Wa min whom and is from among them. Man kafara. Who he denied. Disbelieved. Hid the truth. Man is isma mausul. Relative pronoun. Gafara is fail maadi. Wahid muzakkar ghaib. Third person masculine singular. Past tense. From kafara. Fail maadi. Yakfuru. Fail mudare. The verbal noun must. There is kufran. That is to disbelieve. Walau and if. It was explained previously. Sha Allah. He willed. Allah. Maqtatalu. Not they fought with each other. Iqtatalu is fail maadi. Jama muzakkar ghaib. Third person masculine plural. Past tense. From iqtatala. Yaqtatilu. The verbal noun must. There is iqtatilu. اختتالن that is to fight ولكن الله and but الله يفعل he does root word is فاعين لام since it is starting with يا from يتن it is فعل مضارع واحد مذكر غائب third person masculine singular present tense from فعل يفعل the verbal noun must there is فعلن that is to do ما يريد whatever he wants root word is را واو دال it is فعل مضارع واحد مذكر غائب third person masculine singular present tense since it's starting with يا from أراد يريد the verbal noun must there is إرادة that is to want or to intend يا أيها الذين أو you those who Ya is harfinida, calling particle, and munada, which follows the calling particle. When munada, what is called, starts with al, then for muzakkar masculine, we use ayyuha after ya. Al ladina is isma mausul, jama muzakkar, masculine plural, relative pronoun. A manu, they believed. It is fail maadi, jama muzakkar ghaib, third person masculine plural, past tense. From a mana yu'minu, the masdar verbal noun is imanam, that is to believe. Aum fiqhu, you all spend. Root word is noon, faqaf. Nafqa means a hole or a tunnel with openings on both ends. So you can put wealth through one side and it comes through the other end. And more keeps coming from behind. The more you spend, the more there will be blessing. Aum fiqhu is fa'li amr. Jama muzakkar hadar. Second person masculine plural imperative verb. Since... Uh, order is being given to spend from amfaqa yumfiqu the verbal noun masdar is infaq or infaqun that is to spend mimma from whatever min is harf jar preposition ma is mausul relative pronoun and majroor genitive noun razaqnakum we provided risk sustenance you all root word is ra za qaf razaqna is fa'il maadi jama mutakallam first person plural past tense from razaqa yarzuqu the verbal noun masdar is rizqan that is to provide sustenance rizq is any provision and blessing and not just wealth it can be time ability knowledge of springs all are rizq kum is zameer of jama muzakkar hadir second person masculine plural pronoun min qabl from before qabli is majroor genitive noun Ain ya atiya of that it comes. An is masdariya subordinating conjunction. Root word for ya atiya is hamza ta ya. Since it's starting with a ya, it it is fail mudare wahid mudakkar ghaib. Third person masculine singular present tense. From ata ya ati the verbal noun masdar is itiya un that is to come. Yawmun a day. Ya wow meem is the root word. La bay un fihi not any bargain in it. Root word for bayun is ba ya ain la is nafia negative particle and bayun is masdar verbal noun. Wala khullatun and not any friendship. Root word is ko lam lam. It is isma mushtaq derived noun from khilalun. 
it means to interfere it is also used for a place to enter friendship is a kind of interference in the heart therefore this word is used for a profound friendship that one has with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala shafa'a and nor any intercession root word is sheen fa ya uh, ain sheen fa ain it is isma masdar root noun wal kafiruna and those who deny disbelief hid truth root word is kaf fa ra it is ism fa'il jama muzakkar masculine plural doer or active participle from masdar uh, verbal noun kufran its singular is al kafir humud zalimun alone are those who are unjust to wrong the root word is dha lam mim it is ism fa'il jama muzakkar masculine plural doer or passive particle from verbal noun masdar zulman its singular is az zalimu or az zalim allahu allah la ilaha not any ilah deity god illahu is except he who is dhamire munfasila of wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular detached pronoun since it comes as a separate word unlike who whom huma hunna that come as attached pronouns al hayyu alone is the fount of all being ever living it is an attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala it is a sigha of sifat mushabba resembling particle from verbal noun hayatun al qayyum and the self subsisting everlasting established root word is qaf waw mim it is an attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala it is a sigha of mubaligha phrase of magnificence from the verbal noun qiyamun la ta'khudhuhu does not it takes or seizes root word is hamza kha dal it is fa'il mudhari wahid mu'annis ghaib third person feminine singular present tense from akhadha ya'khudhu the verbal noun is akhdhan which means to take sinatun and drowsiness root word is waw seen noon wala and nor naumun any sleep root word is noon waw mim it is isma masdar root noun lahu is only for him ma fi samawati whatever is in the skies heavens or heights fi is harf jar preposition as samawati is majrur and isma ma'rifa proper genitive noun singular is as sama wa ma fi al ard and whatever is in the earth man zalladhi who is that who man is istifhamia interrogative noun the is isma ishara wahid muzakkar masculine singular demonstrative noun alladhi is isma mausul relative pronoun yashfa'u he intercedes root word is sheen fa ain it is fa'il mudhari wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular present tense from sha- uh, from shafa yashfa'u the verbal noun masdar is shifa'atun that is to intercede and the who near or with of him root word is ain noon dal and the is mudaf what is possessed it means near uh, who is the mere of wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine uh, masculine singular pronoun illa bi izni except with his permission illa is kalima istisna except acceptive particle root word for izni is hamza zal noon it is majrur and mudaf genitive noun what is possessed ya'lamu he knows it is fa'il mudhari wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular present tense from alima ya'lamu the verbal noun masdar is ilman that is to know ma bayna aydihim whatever is between their hands in front of them Baina is mudaf what is possessed aidihim root word is ya dal ya aidi is mudaf ilayh possessor its singular is yadun wa ma khalfahum and whatever is behind of them root word is kha lam fa khalfa is mudaf what is possessed whom is dhamir pronoun wala and not yuhituna they will encompass and circle root word is ha root word is ha wa ta it is uh, fa'il mudhari jama muzakkar ghaib third person masculine plural present tense ahata yuhitu have verbal noun masdar ihatatun that is to encompass or encircle bi shay'in with anything b is harf jar preposition shay'in is majrur genitive noun 
من علمه from his knowledge علمي is مجرور genitive noun and مضاف what is possessed إلا except بما شاء with what he willed وسع it extended spread root word is واو سين عين it is فعل ماضي واحد مذكر غائب third person masculine singular past tense from from وسع يسع the verbal noun of مصدر is سعتن that is to spread to extend कुर्सी यू हिज कुर्सी चेयर अथॉरिटी रूट वर्ड इज का फ्रॉ सीन कुर्सी यू इज मुद ऑफ वट इज पोजेस्ट एंड हु इज द मीर प्रोनाउन असमावात द हाइट स्काइस और हेवन्स वल अर्द एंड द अर्थ लैंड वला एंड डज नॉट यू इट टायर्स वेरीज फटीग्स हिम रूट वर्ड इज हमजा वाउ दाल बिकॉज ऑफ ला इट इज़ फैल मुदार मनफी वाहिद मुदकर गायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्कुल सिंगलर नेगेटिव प्रेजेंट टेंस फ्राम फ्राम अदा फ्राम अदा यद्दू अदा या उद्दू द वर्बल नाउन मजदर इज अउदन दैट इज टू टायर टू बी फटीग हु इज द मेर प्रोनाउन Hifzuhuma of guarding them too. Root word is ha fa. Uh, root word is ha fa wa. Hifzu is masdar, uh, verbal noun and mudaf what is possessed. Huma is mudaf ilay possessor and damir of the sneer mu an nasqaib third person feminine dual pronoun. Wa huwa and he huwa is munfasila damir or wahid mudakar qaib. Third person masculine singular detached pronoun. Al Ali you alone is the most high exalted. Root word is Ain Lam Wow. It is an attribute of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. From Ali Ali Yun verbal noun. It is sifth mushabba resembling particle. Al Azim and the always most great supreme. Root word is Ain Wa Mim. It is an attribute of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and sifth mushabba resembling particle from verbal noun Azmatun. La ikraha not any compulsion. Root word is Kaf Ra Ha. It is a mazdar verbal noun root noun. Fi Dini is in the divine. Dean religion way of life. Fi is her feature preposition. Dal ya noon is root word and ad din is majrur genitive noun and isme marifa proper noun since it's starting with al. Qad tabayyana. In fact, it became clear, explicit. Qad is kalima tahqiq particle of certainty. It is used for emphasis. Ar rushdu the right way rectitude. Root word is ra sheen dal. It is mazdar verbal noun from rushda here uh, from rushda here shudu. Mina lagayi from the error straying. Root word is gain wow ya straying due to ignorance or lack of knowledge. It is majrur genitive noun and opposite of hidaya. For main yakfur so whoever he denies. Fa is her feat conjunction. It means so or thus. Man is isme mausul shartiya conditional relative pronoun. Yakfur is fala mudare majzoom wahid muzakkar gaib third person masculine singular present tense in justice case. From kafara yakfuru the verbal noun mazdar is kufran that is to disbelieve deny. With taqooti with the taqood the false deities those worshipped other than Allah. root word is ta ghain ya b is her fajr preposition at taghuti is majrur genitive noun uh, there is kasra in the end t due to her fajr everything that takes one away from the obedience and servitude to allah and makes one cross the limits any false deity that is worshiped other than allah subhanahu wa taala be it owns one's own desire nafs is ta is taghut ويؤمن بالله and he believes in with Allah يؤمن is فعل مضارع مجزوم واحد مذكر غائب third person masculine singular present tense in justice case from آمنا يؤمن the verbal noun مصدر is إيمانا that is to believe B in بالله is her feature preposition here it is used in the meaning of على upon Allah Allah is مجرور genitive noun فقد then in fact استمسك he grasped Held firmly. Root word is mim sin kaf. It is fail amadi wahid mazakar gaib third person masculine singular past tense. From is is tamsaka is tamsiku the verbal noun mazdar is is tamsakun that is to hold firmly. 
بال عروه الوثقى with the handle hand hold the firm strong b is her figure preposition al urwati is majrur genitive noun and is the plural form of urun root word for wusqa is waw tha qaf from the verbal noun masdar wisaqatun it is ism tafdil muannas feminine superlative noun Long fisama, not any breaking. Root word is fa, so the meme from in fisama, yam fasim, eh, in fisama, yam fasimu. The verbal noun must there is in fisamun, that is to break. Laha is for it or her. Wallahu and Allah. Sami'un is one always all here. Root word is seen, meme, ain. Alimun and one always all knower. Root word is ain, lam, meme. Allahu, Allah. Wali yuladina alone is guardian, friend, close, protecting of those who. Root word is wow, lam, ya. It is isme, uh, isme nakira, common noun. Aladina is isme mausul jama muzakkar, masculine plural relative pronoun. Aminu they believed. Explained previously. Will we will not repeat what was covered previously in today's lesson. You khurijo whom he takes out them. Root word is kha, ra, jim. Yukhriju is fail mudare. Wahid, muzakkar, ghaib. Third person masculine singular present tense. From akhraja yukhriju, the verbal noun masdar is ikhrajan. Mina dhulumat, from the darkness. Adhulumat is majroor, genitive noun. Ilan noor, two or two words, the noor, light. Root word noon, waw, ra. Ila is harfajar preposition. And nooori is majroor, genitive noun. Walladina and those who kafaru they disbelieved denied hid truth. It is falmadi jamun zakar ghaib third person masculine plural past tense. From kafara yakfuru the verbal noun must there is kufran that is to deny disbelieve. Aulia ohum their aulia guardians friends close protecting. Aulia is mudaf that what is possessed. Its singular is waliyun which means friend. Whom in the end is damir pronoun. Attaqud are the Taghut false deities, those worshipped other than Allah. Yukhrijuna hum, they take out them. Here Yukhrijuna is plural, na specifies plural. It is fel mudare, jama muzakar ghaib, third person masculine plural, present tense. Previously we covered Yukhriju, which was singular, and Yukhrijuna is plural. Min and noor, from the noor, light, min is harfajar, preposition. And noor, and nooori is the genitive case. Ila dhulumat, to towards the darkness ila is harfajar preposition adhulumati is majroor genitive case ulaika those it is isma ishara jama ba'id plural far demonstrative noun ashabun nar are companions of the hell fire it is murakkab idafi possessive phrase ashab saad ha ba is the root word it is mudaf what is possessed and it means companion comrade it singular is sahibun or sahib and nari noon waw ra is the root word it is mudaf ilay possessor it means hellfire hum fiha they are in it or her khalidun as ones who abide dwell eternally root word is kha lam dal from khuludun masdar it is isma fail jama muzakkar masculine plural doer active participle its singular is khalid or khalidun Alam tara, did not you see, look. A in the beginning is Hamza, is the Fahmiya, interrogative Hamza. It is used for expressing astonishment. Lam makes the fail mudare present tense, manfi, negative. Root word for, for tara is ra, Hamza, ya. It is fail mudare, wahid, muzakkar, hadir, second person masculine singular present tense. From ra, ya ra, the verbal noun masdar is ru, yetun, that is to see. Ilal ladhi, to, at who. Hajj, he argued, disputed. Root word is ha, jim, jim. It is fail maadi, wahid, mudakar ghaib, third person masculine, singular, past tense. From hajj, you had the verbal noun is muhajjatun, that is to argue or to dispute. Ibrahim, Ibrahim, fi rabbihi, in concerning his rabb, sustainer. Rabbi is majroor and mudaf, genitive noun, what is possessed. He is damir and mudaf, ilayh, pronoun and possessor. And that it is masdariya, subordinating conjunction. Aatahullahu, he gave him, Allah. 
आता इट इज़ फेल मावी वाहिद मुजक्कर गायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर पैसटेंस हु इज़ द मीर प्रोनाम अलमुल्कु द किंगडम किंगशिप अथॉरिटी रूट वर्ड इज़ मीम लाम काफ इज कॉला वन ही सेड इज इज़ जरफ जमान टाइम एड वर्क टू शो पास टाइम कॉला इज फेल मावी वाहिद मुजक्कर गायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर पास टेंस From Kala Yakulu, the verbal noun must that is Khaulan that is to say. Ibrahima, Ibrahim, Rabbi, Rabbiya, my Rabb, sustainer. It was actually Rabbi ya sakin in the end. To join it to the next word, a fatha was placed on ya Rabbi. Um, uh, is placed on ya. Rabbi is mudaf, what is possessed. Ya sakin is mudaf ilay possessor. Ya sakin is the mere of wahid mutakallam first person singular pronoun. Alladi alone is whom. It is isma mausul wahid mutakar masculine singular relative pronoun. You he he gives life. It is fail mudare wahid mutakar gaib third person masculine singular present tense. It starts with ya from yatan from ahya you he the verbal noun must there is ahya un which means to give life. Wa yumi tu he gives death. Root word is mim wa ta. It is fail mudare wahid mutakar gaib. Third person masculine singular present tense. From amata you me to the verbal noun must there is imata tun which means to give death. Kala he said ana uhi I I give life. Ana is mumfasila damir of wahid mutakallam first person singular detached pronoun. Uhi it is fail mudare wahid mutakar mutakallam first person masculine singular present tense. From ahya you he the must there is ahya un that is to give life. व उम्मीद एंड आई गिव डेथ इट इज़ फेल मुदार वाहिद मुजक्कर मुतकलम फर्स्ट पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर प्रजेंट टेंस बिफोर दिस वॉज यू मी टू विच वॉज फेल मुदार वाहिद मुजक्कर गायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर प्रजेंट टेंस कॉल इब्राहिम ही सेड इब्राहिम व इन अल्लाह सो इन डीड अल्लाह फ इज़ हरफ आतफ कंजंक्शन इन्ना इज़ हरफ मुशबा बिलफेल पार्टिकल रिजम्बलिंग वर्ब ये अति ही कम्स विथ और ब्रिंग्स बिश शमसी विद द सन रूट वर्ड इज शीन मीम सीन बी इन द बिगनिंग इज़ हरफ जर प्रपोजिशन अश शमसी इज़ मजरूर जेनेटिव नाम मिन अल मशरक़ी फ्राम द ईस्ट फ अति सो यू कम विथ और ब्रिंग फ इज़ हरफ आतफ कंजंक्शन अ इज हमजा अलवसल हमजतुलवसल कनेक्टिंग हमजा विच वॉज ड्रॉप्ड ड्यू टू बींग इन द मिडिल अति इज फेल आम्र वाहिद मुजक्कर हादर सेकेंड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर इम्परेटिव वर्ब वैन वी रिमूव फा वी गेट हमजा विद कसरा ई एंड जजम ऑन टॉप एंड देन ता विद कसरा ती दस इति फ्राम अता या अति द वर्बल नॉन मजदर इज इतियान दट इज टू ब्रिंग बी हा विद इट हर बी इज हर फिजर प्रपोजिशन हा इज द मीर प्रोनाउन मिनल मगोरी बी फ्राम द वेस्ट root word is ghain ra ba fabu hita so he was made to be astonished dumbfounded root word is ba ha ta fa in the beginning is harf at conjunction bu hita is fa'il madhi majhul wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular passive past tense due to the dhamma on ba its fa'il madhi is um, इट्स फेल माजी इज़ बहिता फेल मुदार ये बहतु एंड मजदर वर्बल नाउन इज़ बहतन दैट इज़ टू बी एस्टोनिश्ड अल्लदी हु कफरा ही डिनाइड ही ट्रूथ और डिसबिलीव वल्लाह एंड अल्लाह ला यहदी डज नॉट ही गाइड रूट वर्ड इज़ हा दाल या इट इज़ फेल मुदार वाहिद मुदक्कर गायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर प्रजेंट इज फ्राम हदा यहदी द वर्बल नाउन इज़ हिदायतन दैट इज़ टू गाइड Al-Qawm, the nation, people. It is Mausuf, which is described. Uh, root word is Qaf, Waw, Mim. Al-Zali, Mim. Those who are unjust do wrong. It is Sifth adjective from verbal noun Masdar, Zulmun. It is Ism. Fail Jama Muzakkar, um, masculine plural doer, active particle. Its singular is Zalimu or Zalim. Al-Zalimu or Al-Zalim. Aw or Kaladi like who? Ka in the beginning is harf uh, tashbih particle of similitude. It means like similar. Aladi is isma mausul relative pronoun. Marra he passed. 
root word is meem ra ra it is fail madhi wahid mudakkar ghaib third person masculine singular past tense from marra yamurru the verbal noun must there is marran which means to pass ala upon qaryatin a town root word is khaf ra ya wa hiya while it or she wa is haliya circumstantial particle and it means in the situation uh, that hiya is dhameer of wahid muannas ghaib third person feminine singular pronoun khawiyatun is one fallen down overturned root word is kha wa hiya from bubble noun masdar kha wa kha wa kha wa un it is ism fa'il wahid muannas feminine singular doer ala upon her fajr urushiha its or her roof tops root word is ain ra sheen urushi is majrur urushi is majrur genitive noun and mudaf what is possessed ha is mudaf ilai possessor and dhameer pronoun anything that gives a shade is arsh qala he said anna how or when it is istifhamiya interrogative noun used in the meaning of kaifa that is how yuhyi he will bring or brings to life hadhihi this ism ishara wahid muannath qareeb feminine singular near demonstrative noun allahu allah ba'da after it is mudaf what is possessed mautiha of its her hers death it is mudaf ilai possessor ha in the end is dhameer pronoun fa amatahu so he gave death caused to die him root word is meem waw ta fa in the beginning is harf at conjunction amata in is fa'il madhi wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular past tense from amata you meet to the verbal noun must there is imata tun that is to give death who in the end is dhameer pronoun allahu allah miata a hundred root word is meem hamza ya it is isma adad numeral adjective amin of fear root word is ain waw meem tum then it is harf at conjunction ba'athu he raised resurrected him root word is ba ain sa ba'sa is fa'il madhi wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular past tense from ba'sa ya ba'su the verbal noun is ba'san that is to resurrect who in the end is dhameer pronoun qala he said kam how long much it is used for questioning istifham labista you remained stayed root word is lam ba sa it is fa'il madhi wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular past tense from labitha yalbathu the verbal noun of masdar is labthan that is to stay qala he said labistu i stayed or remained it is fa'il madhi wahid mutakallam first person singular past tense yawman a day root word is ya waw meem aw or it is harf atf conjunction ba'da apart yawmin of a day qala he said bal labista rather or nay you remained stayed bal is harf idraq retraction particle and it is used to negate the previous things miata a hundred amin of year fanzur so you look or see root word is noon za ra fa is harf atf conjunction unzur is fa'il amr wahid mudakkar hadir second person masculine singular imperative verb from nadara yanzuru the verbal noun masdar is nadran that is to see ila to or at ta'amika you your food root word is ta ain mim ta'ami is majrur genitive noun and mudaf what is possessed ka in the end is mudaf ila possessor and dhameer of wahid mudakkar hadir second person masculine singular pronoun washarabik and your drink a root word is sheen ra ba it is mudaf what is possessed and ka in the end is dhameer pronoun lam yatasanna did not it ages spoils rots root word is seen noon ha it is fa'il mudhar wahid mudakkar ghaib third person masculine singular present tense from the tasanna ha yatasannahu the verbal noun masdar is tasan tasannuhan that is to spoil go stale because of lam the mudare present is translated as madi past tense wandur because of lam the mudare present is translated as madi past tense wandur and you look or see it is fa'il amr wahid muzakkar hadir second person masculine singular uh, imperative verb from nadara yanzuru the verbal noun masdar is nadran that is to see 
इला हिमारिक टू और एट योर डोंकी रूट वर्ड इज हा मीम रॉ हिमार इज मजरूर जेनेटिव नाउन एंड मुदाफ वट इज पोजेस्ट क इन द एंड इज मुदाफ इले पोजेसर एंड दमीर प्रोनाउन वल इन जाल का सो दैट वी मे क्यू रूट वर्ड इज जीम आइन लाम ली इन द बिगनिंग इज लाम तलील नासिबा प्रिफिक्स पार्टिकल ऑफ पर्पज लाम न जला इज फैल मुदार न जाला इज फैल मुदार जम मुतकलम फर्स्ट पर्सन प्लूरल प्रजेंटेंस फ्राम जाला ये जालू द वर्बल नाउन मजदर इज जाल विच मीन्स टू मेक आयतुल्लास असाइन फॉर द मैन काइंड पीपल ली इज़ हर फिजर प्रपोजिशन अन नासी इज मजरूर जेनेटिव नाउन वंजुर एंड यू लुक और सी इलामी टू और एट द बोन्स रूट वर्ड इज आइन व मीम इट इज इसम मारिफा प्रॉपर नाउन सिंस इट्स बिगनिंग विद अल कईफा हाउ द रूट वर्ड इज काफा काफ या फा नूनशी जुहा वी रेज पुट टुगेदर इट और हर रूट वर्ड इज नून शीन जा नूनशी जुहा इज फैल मुदार जमा मुतकलम फर्स्ट पर्सन प्लूरल प्रजेंटेंस फ्राम अन शजा यून शिजु द वर्बल नाउन मजदर इज इन शाहजन दैट इज टू पुट टुगेदर तुम नक सुहा देन वी क्लोथ इट और हर तुम इज हर फैत कंजंक्शन नक्सु रूट वर्ड इज काफ सीन वाउ इट इज फेल मुदार जम मुतकलम फर्स्ट पर्सन प्लूरल प्रजेंटेंस फ्राम कसा यक्सु द वर्बल नाउन इज किस वन दैट इज टू क्लोथ ह इन द एंड द मीर प्रो नाउन लहमन विथ फ्लैश रूट वर्ड इज लाम हा मीम तनवीन ऑन द लास्ट लेटर सिग्निफाइज दैट इट इज इसम किरा कॉमन नाउन फलम्मा सो वेन फ इज हर फ्फ कंजंक्शन लम्मा इज इसम दर्फ टाइम एड वर्ब तबैन लहू इट बिकेम क्लियर एक्सप्लिसिट सेल्फ एविडेंट टू और फॉर हिम तबैन इस फैल मादी वाहिद मदकर वायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर पास्ट टेंस फ्राम तबैन ए तबैन द वर्बल नाउन मजदर इज तबैन दैट इज टू बिकम क्लियर ला इज हर फिजर प्रपोजिशन हु इज द मेर प्रो नाउन कॉल ही सेट आलम आई नो रूट वर्ड इज आइन लाम मीम इट इज फैल मुदार वाहिद मुतकलम फर्स्ट पर्सन सिंगुलर प्रजेंटेंस फ्राम आलिम यालम द वर्बल नाउन मजदर इज अलमन इट स्टार्ट विद हमजा फ्राम दान देर फोर इट इट्स अ मुदार अन इंडीड अल्लाह अन्ना इज हरफ मुशबा बिलफेल पार्टिकल रिजमलिंग वर्ब अला इज अपॉन कुल शईन ऑल एवरी ऑफ थिंग्स अदीर वन ऑलवेज ऑल एबल पावरफुल ओमनीपोटेंट रूट वर्ड इज ऑफ दल रॉ फ्राम खुदरत मजदर इट इज सिफ्त मुशबा रिजमलिंग पार्टिकल एंड इट इज यूज एज एन एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान तलोन व इज एंड वन रिकॉल इज इज जरफ जमान टाइम एड वर्ब एंड इट्स यूज फॉर पास्ट कॉल ही सेट इब्राहिम इब्राहिम रबी ओ माई रब सस्टेनर अरिनी यू शो मी रूट वर्ड इज रॉ हमजा या अरी इज फैल अमर वाहिद मुजक्कर हादर सेकेंड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर इम्परेटिव वर्ब फ्राम अरा यूरी द वर्बल नाउन मजदर इज ई रॉ तुन दैट इज टू शो या इन द एंड द मीर प्रो नाउन कईफा हाउ तुह यल मऊता यू विल गिव लाइफ द वंस डेड कॉल ही सेट अवलम डिड एंड नॉट तो मिन यू बिलीव इट इज़ फैल मुदार वाहिद मुजक्कर हादर सेकेंड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर प्रजेंटेंस कॉल ही सेट बला वाई नॉट इट इज़ हरफ जवाब और आंसरिंग पार्टिकल एंड इट निगेट्स द अर्लियर स्टेटमेंट व लाकिन बट व इज हरफ्यात कंजंक्शन लाकिन इज़ हरफ मुशबा बिलफैल पार्टिकल रिजम्बलिंग व लिया तो माई इन सो दैट डेफिनेटली इट बी सेटिसफाइड कंटेंट रूट वर्ड इज तो मीम नून ली इन द बिगनिंग इज लाम तलील नासिबा प्रिफिक्स पार्टिकल ऑफ पर्पोज लाम मीनिंग इज सो दैट यकमा इन्न इज़ फैल मुदार वाहिद मुदक्कर गायब थर्ड पर्सन मैस्किन सिंगुलर प्रजेंटेंस फ्राम इतमा इन्न यतमा इन्नु द वर्बल नॉन मजदर इज इतमान दैट इज़ टू बी सेटिसफाइड पलबी माई हार्ट of lamba is the root word qalbi is mudaf what is possessed ya sakin in the end is mudaf ilay possessor and dhameer of wahid mutakallam first person singular pronoun qala he said fakhud 
then you take root word is hamza kha dal fa is harf aqt conjunction khud is fa'il amr wahid muzakkar hadir second person masculine singular imperative verb from akhadha ya khudu the verbal noun masdar is akhdun that is to take arba'atun four root word is ra ba ain min at tayri from among the birds root word is ta ya ra fasuruhun then you tame them incline them sad waw ra is the root word fa in the beginning is harf at conjunction uh, sur is fa'il amr wahid mudakkar hadir second person masculine singular imperative verb from sawra yasuru uh, the verbal noun masdar is sawran that is to tame huna hunna in the end is dhameer of jama muannas ghayib third person feminine plural pronoun ilayka to or towards you ila is harf e jar preposition ka is dhameer pronoun thumma jal then you put thumma is harf e atf conjunction and here it is used in the meaning of ma then ijal is fa'il e amr imperative verb since an order is being given it is wahid mudakkar hadir second person masculine singular ala upon kulli jabalin each or every or all of mountain root word is jim ba lam it is mudaf ilai possessor min hunna from them min is harf e jar preposition hunna is the mere pronoun juzan a portion root word is jim za hamza tum mad'u hunna then you call them root word is uh, dal ain waw ud'u is fa'il amr wahid mudakkar hadir second person masculine singular imperative verb from da'a yad'u the verbal noun is da'awatun to call or invite hunna is the mere pronoun ya'tiyan ya'tinaka they will come to you root word is hamza ta ya ya'tina is fa'il mudhari jama muannas ghayib third person feminine plural present tense from ata ya'ti the verbal noun masdar is ityanun that is to come ka is the mere pronoun sa'yan running root word is seen ain ya it is a masdar masdar verbal noun wa'lam and you know wa is harf e atf conjunction i'lam is fa'il e amr wahid mudakkar hadir second person uh, second person masculine singular imperative verb anna allah indeed allah azizun is always almighty root word is ain za za it is an attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from verbal noun masdar izzatun it is in the meaning of fa'il doer sigha of mubaligha phrase of magnificence hakim and always all wise root word is ha kaf mim it is sept mushabba resembling particle from masdar verbal noun hikmatun it is an attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala now let's listen to the recitation of today's verses a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على بعض منهم من كلم الله ورفع بعضهم درجات واتينا عيسى ابن مريم البينات وايدناه بروح القدس ولو شاء الله ما قتتل الذين من بعدهم من بعدهم من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات ولكن اختلفوا فمنهم من آمن ومنهم من كفر ولو شاء الله ما اقتتلوا ولكن الله يفعل ما يريد يا ايها الذين امنوا انفقوا مما رزقناكم رزقناكم من قبل ان ياتي يوم لا بيع لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون 
Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum la ta'khudhuhu sinatun wa la nawm lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard man dhalladhi yashfa'u 'indahu illa bi يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لا انفصام لها والله سميع عليم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون ألم تر إلى الذي حاج إبراهيم في ربه أن آتاه الله الملك إذ قال إبراهيم ربي الذي يحيي ويميت قال أنا أحيي وأميت قال إبراهيم فإن الله يأتي بالشمس من المشرق فأت بها من المغرب فبهت الذي كفر والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاضية على عروشها قال أنا يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها فأماته الله مئة عام ثم بعثه قال كم لبث قال لبثت يوما أو بعض يوم قال بل لبثت مئة عام فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنى وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلك آية للناس وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشزها ثم نكسوها لحما فلما تبين له قال أعلم أن الله قال أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير وإذ قال إبراهيم رب أرني كيف تحيي الموتى قال أولم تؤمن قال بلى ولكن ليطمئن قلبي قال فخذ أربعة من الطيب فصرهن إليك ثم اجعل على كل جبل منهن جزءا 
ثم دعوهن يأتينك سعيا واعلم أن الله عزيز حكيم Now let us begin the tafsir. Meaning and tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah verses 253 to 260. Tafsir of verse number 253. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على على بعض منهم من كلم الله ورفع بعضهم درجات وآتينا عيسى ابن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس ولو شاء الله ما قتل الذين من بعدهم من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات ما جاءتهم البينات ولكن اختلفوا فمنهم من آمن ومنهم من كفر ولو شاء الله ما اقتتلوا ولكن الله يفعل ما يريد Translation These are the prophets which we have sent for the guidance of mankind we have exalted some above others to some allah spoke directly others he raised high in ranks to isa jesus the son of maryam mary we gave clear signs and supported him with the holy spirit if allah wanted the people who received the clear signs would not have fought against each other but they disputed as a result there were some who believed while others rejected yet if allah wanted they would not have fought each other what allah does what he intends tafsir first of all the preeminences of some of the prophets are stated in this ayah followed by the wisdom and pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala that he has granted human beings authority and freedom and has not mandated that they pursue a straight path first of all it has been said i have given superiority to some on some that means i have given superiority to some prophets let us see the scenario of this ayah It has been stated that one Muslim and one Jew were in an argument. The Jew said, "Swear to God, who had given superiority to Musa on all the prophets." Muslim could not control. He said, "My Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is superior to Musa alaihi salam." This ayah was revealed on this that we preferred some to others. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "All these rasuls who who were mentioned was um, whose mention was in previous ayah two hundred fifty two." There it was. Wa inna kalamin al mursalin. O Nabi, you are one of the messenger of Allah. This is the evidence that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Nabi and Rasul. These Rasuls are uh, such whom I have given superiority on one another. In Bani Israel, ayah number fifty-five. and we have certainly granted excellence to some prophets over some others see the biggest superiority is that allah chose them among all the people for his nubuwwat and risalat so there is no difference among them this is the reason that in bukhari and muslim it has been stated that nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you do not give me supreme authority over others then he said do not give superiority to any prophet on any other prophet not even on yunus bin mata prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has pro- prohibited to do differences among the prophets this is not our status this authority is only with allah subhanahu wa taala the one who has made human beings he knows who is better than whom who is superior to who this is the reason that allah subhanahu wa taala says in the quran i have given superiority to someone others on that basis they have the edge then a uh, few are being mentioned min hum kallam allah wa rafa'a ba'dahum darajat among them are those with whom allah did conversation and raised them in status wa atayna isa ibn maryam al bayyinati and gave miracles to isa ibn maryam wa ayyadnahum bi ruh al qudus and i helped him with jibril alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the reasons of raising the status of some prophets on the other prophets here some are mentioned with whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had conversation like adam alayhi salam musa alayhi salam and the time of miraj with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then it has been said raised the status of the five ark prophets ulul azm prophets the, they are hazrat nuh alayhi salam hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam hazrat musa alayhi salam hazrat isa alayhi salam and hazrat muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has been given the highest status among all of them he is the last prophet on the day of qiyamah hereafter 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will do the greatest intercession shifaat e kubra and after the call to prayer adhan we ask for maqam e mahmud for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sharia of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is for all the people to come till the day of qiyamah in surah bani israil ayah 50 we have preferred some of the prophets above others Some got the edge on the basis of miracles they got. The example: Isa ibn Maryam performed numerous miracles, one of which was the ability to bring the dead back to life. He could restore sight to the blind who had been born blind, treated leprosy patients, and even create birds out of dirt and breathed life into them. Without a doubt, the birth of Isa alayhi salam was a miracle. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala aided Isa alayhi salam with Jibreel alayhi salam, as uh, in the same way that with the blow of Jibreel alayhi salam, Hazrat Maryam conceived. At the time of child's birth, Jibreel alayhi salam made the water spring flow there. Then there was a date tree. Jibreel alayhi salam said, "Shake the branch of the tree." Then, then the uh, fresh uh, date fell on her. When Isa was a baby, he spoke in the cradle. This was all with the aid of uh, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, and he begged his mother's innocence from the cradle, and he was raised to the sky at Allah subhanahu wa taala's command. ولو شاء الله ما اقتتل الذين من بعدهم من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات ولا ولكن اختلفوا because of differences in thought فمنهم من آمن منهم من كفر they did not fight among themselves if Allah had wanted them to as a result some people accepted Islam while others rejected Allah and His Rasul according to this verse if Allah had desired the populace would have uh, would not have objected and would have adhered to a single deen and would have practiced tawhid because disagreements disputes arise between them and yes the cause of these disagreements disputes is because of the freedom granted to them uh, humans have been given the power to do whatever their hearts desire if a person submits his or her will to allah subhanahu wa taala's will and does as he or she is told fighting won't occur which means that refusing to submit one's will to allah subhanahu wa taala is disbelief a person becomes a disbeliever when he does not obey allah if the people believed in one law the sharia and if allah willed then the hereafter would be beautiful they wouldn't have argued because everyone would have followed the same deen evidently they had to be uh, they had to be traveling the road to heaven or the guided way but it didn't happen like that because this is not how allah works and he never forces anybody to follow his guidance Allah did not compel them to follow the road that he had chosen for them instead Allah has granted them freedom they are self governing they have given the duty to make their own decisions and this is the test this is the challenge what road he uh, what road that this is the challenge that with his will what way he chooses in surah al-mulk ayah number 2 allazi khalaqa al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala wa huwa al-'aziz al-ghafur who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created death and life that means he gave you life and then death and the time between them so that he may test you which one of you is best in good deeds they are the ones uh, done in the state of iman and according to quran and sunnah he is also all powerful and merciful yes we have been placed here to be tested this world is an examination hall Allah has retained both kindness and wickedness in each person's soul in surah shams ayah number 8 fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha then he showed him what is wrong for him and what is right for him Allah wants to see who keeps himself away from wickedness and who attains taqwa this is the test of a person man amana fa amana wa minhum man kafar The, what is the test that after getting the guidance who brings iman uh, on allah and spends life according to the way of allah subhanahu wa taala and who refuses the truth because allah has given freedom and authority to a person to choose between them the path will be made easy 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 for them whatever he wants that will be given whoever wants to deviate from the right path and whoever wants to be guided to the right path that path will be opened for them in surah ashura ayah 13 wa yahdi ilayhi man yunib and he guides unto himself who turns to him in repentance and obedience who gets the guidance yes who wants to take same way in surah saf ayah number 5 falamma zaghu azagha allah qulubahum wallahu la yahdi alqawm alfasiqin 
so when they turned away from the path of allah allah turned their hearts away from the right path and allah guides not the people who are fasikhun disobedient to allah turned away from the right path in the end it is being said ولو شاء الله ما اقتتلوا ولكن الله يفعل ما يريد if allah had willed they would have not have fought against one another but allah does what he likes that means if allah willed they would have not fought and everyone would have been on the guided path but allah does not force anyone to take the path of guidance or wickedness it's not that one wants to be guided and is striving for it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts him on the wrong path no the pleasure and wisdom of allah is to put people on their desired path and makes that path easy or he sits in front of an idol and asks for something and is granted by his aid until and unless he does not sit in front of the idol he will not get whichever path you want to go that path is made easy for you what lesson do we learn from this ayah should not reject any nabi refusal of one nabi is as if rejection uh, of all prophets not have to differentiate should uh, we should ask only allah for grace and should keep away from all types of disagreements difference of opinions on religious matters what should be done to keep away from disagreements yes with conviction acquire knowledge of the quran and the sunnah and act upon it تفسير of verse number 254 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون Translation O believers spend out of the sustenance which we have provided for you before the arrival of that day when there will be no bargaining friendship or intercession it is the unbelievers who are the wrong doers tafsir in this ayah we are being told spend the believers are being told to do infaq in this ayah when the islamic state is founded money is required to rule it thus it is said to us the muslims that they should sp- uh, thus it is said to us the muslims that they should spend their money in accordance with allah's will ya ayyuhal ladina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnakum o believers whatever i have given you spend it in my way First of all we have to understand what is the concept of sustenance risk risk means of springs knowledge time ability whatever strength allah has given whatever skills allah has given everything is included in it Hazrat Hasan Basri radiyallahu anhu states whoever seeks to obtain the world and grants the world precedence over the hereafter then allah will give six different types of torments three of which will be in this life and three of which will be in the hereafter In the previous ayah it was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this life for test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the will and authority whatever path you want to choose in your life path of guidance or wickedness same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given risk that is wealth offspring skills st- strength health all are depository for the sake of test that how we spend that given time and wealth in this world we spend in acts of sins or in acts of goodness if we are using these blessings in acts of sins and unlawful acts then we will spoil our hereafter and we and will buy the hell fire for ourselves and we if we use these blessings in the pleasure of allah then we will do the deal of jannah will be the buyer of heaven here the importance of spending in the cause of allah has been told the love for wealth has been kept in human nature so not spending the wealth or using it in a wrong way or using an act of sins puts the person in conflicts what is needed to help the poor and needy uh, wealth and these charities which we give to poor and needy will become the reason to get rid of hellfire min qabli an yati yawm la bay'un fihi wa la khullatu wa la shafa'a spend your wealth before the day of khiyama comes how will be the day of khiyama when nothing will be of any use no friendship no matter how useful it was in this world and not any intercede there will be no buying and selling what would happen if someone bought something paid a bribe and had their sentence commuted like in this world wala khullatun there will be no best friend what does a best friend do in this world even if you had killed someone then also he takes your side wala shafaatun and no intercession will be of any use 
here you kill or suppress you can hire solicitors to plead for you it has been said that all these things will not exist there it's in the quran that friends will also become foes and everyone will be concerned for themselves and would be saying nafsi nafsi myself myself then وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Those who disbelieve are truly the wrongdoers. That means those who are not on guidance and does not have faith, rejecting the truth and is a non-believer, not even giving the zakah. These are the cruel people doing all wrong things and not even spending in the way of Allah and doing a loss, making deal and torturing themselves because they do not believe in the law of Allah and on the day of judgment. So this has been said that they are zalim. Because they are collecting their wealth in the locker of this world and not giving sadaqah and zakah on the day of Qiyamah, this wealth will be molted and used to for branding the, uh, uh, branding them. Here, especially the people who do not give zakah are mentioned as zalim, cruel. Actually, they do not spend the blessings in the way of Allah. We have mentioned that they do not spend their wealth, time, skills, strength and whatever blessings Allah has given. They, uh, they, uh, they not for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They minimize spending on topics pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not invest in the illustrious advancement of their religion, but instead um, uh, spend money on things that make Allah angry. They should feel afraid that if they die in that state, then the day of Qiyamah is very tough. No buying and selling will be done on that day. No friendship will be of any help and no one uh, and no any intercede, intercession will be of any help. The day of Qiyamah will be very tough and on that day, Sadaqah will benefit them. People will be in the shade of their charities on that day because on that day, the sun will be very close, severe, hot. It has also been said who hides and gives sadaqah will also be in the shade provided by his charity. In Sahih Muslim, once a man asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa which deed is the best charity. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said that you give charity when you are healthy and, mi- and miserly, fearing poverty and hoping to become rich. Be fast in giving charity. Do not delay until your soul reaches up to the throat and you then say this is for so and so and this is for so and so. Lo, it has already come into the position of the heirs. This is the reason that at the end of the ayah it has been said on the day of Qiyamah your sadaqah will come to your help after the death. They will be of no use. They will be of the heirs. All these leaderships and friendships will be of no use. No intercession will be accepted. So collect for yourself today by sending forwards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Tafsir of verse number 255. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinadun wa la nawm. له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسي السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم Translation, Allah, there is no God but Him, the living, the eternal. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. To Him belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth. Who can intercede with Him without His permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them. They cannot gain access to anything out of His knowledge except what He pleases. His throne is more vast than the heavens and the earth, and guarding of these both does not fatigue Him. He is the exalted, the supreme. Tafsir, this was the translation of the most big, biggest, the best ayah of the Quran and is called the Ayat al-Kursi. Now let us see the virtue of this ayah in the light of Hadith. In Sahih Bukhari, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anh said that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made me in charge of the charity of Sadaqat al-Fitr. Somebody came and started stealing some food stuff. I caught him and said, I must take you to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I am a needy man with a large family and I have a pressing need. I let him go. Next morning, Messenger of Allah asked me, O oh Abu Huraira, what did your captive do last night? 
I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, he complained of a pressing need and a big family. I felt pity for him, so I let him go. He said, He told you a lie and he will return. I was sure, according to the saying of Messenger of Allah, that he would return. I waited for him. He sneaked up again and began to steal food stuff from the Sadaqa. I caught him and said, I must take you to the Messenger of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Let me go. I am a needy man. I have to bear the expense of a big family. I will not come again. So I took pity on him. And so I let him go. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He told you a lie and he will return. That man again came to steal the food stuff. I arrested him and said, I must take you to the messenger of Allah. This is the last of three times. You promised that you would not come again, but you did. He said, let me go. I will teach you some words which will benefit you. I asked, what are those words? He replied, when you go to bed, recite Ayatul Kursi. For there will be a guardian appointed over you from Allah and, sh- and shaitan will not be able to approach you till morning. So I let him go. Next morning the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa asked me, What did your prisoner do last night? I told everything to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he promised to teach me some words which he claimed will benefit me before Allah. So I let him go. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, What are those words that he taught you? I said, He told me, When you go to bed, recite Ayat al-Kursi from the beginning to the end. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He said the truth, though he is a liar. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Huraira, do you know who had been coming to you in these three nights? I said, No. Then he said, He was shaitan. This was the hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Same way in one narration of Nis- Nisai, it has been mentioned that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever recites Ayat al-Kursi immediately after each prescribed prayer, there will be nothing standing between him and his entering paradise except death. After death, they will feel the comforts of heaven. The only hindrance will be delayed death. In Sahih Muslim, Abi bin Ka'ab radiallahu anh narrated that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me, Abu Hunzir, do you know which is the most virtuous ayah of the book of Allah? Abi bin Ka'ab radiallahu anh says, I said, Allah and his Rasul knows more. Then again Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, Abu Hunzir, do you know which ayah is greatest in the book of Allah? I said, La ilaha illallahu, La ilaha illallahu, La ilaha illallahu, لا إله إلاه إلا هو الحي القيوم. Then he صلى الله عليه وسلم put his hand on him I chest and said Abu Munzil, congrats on your knowledge. In Bukhari, Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said, everything has a Quran and the Quran of Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. And one ayah which is the leader of all ayahs is Ayat Al-Kursi. That means it is superior and there are beautiful description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Uthman Razilan says that this ayah, there are eight signs of a person who recognizes Allah. Fear of Allah and hope of mercy, that means there is fear of Allah, is always in his heart and is never disappointed from the mercy of Allah. Number two, praises of Allah is always on his tongue in public as well as in private. He will praise Allah. Number three, haya, modesty and tears in his eyes. That means in fear of grave and the hereafter, in the love of Allah and his favors to thank him or after listening the, to the Quran, his eyes become wet and tears flow. Number four, abandoning worldly pleasures and is always ready to attain the pleasures of Allah. Always he has a worry how to please Allah. He constantly fears that my Rabb may become enraged with me and he rushes to do anything to appease Allah. In this ayah, the first thing that has been said is, Allahu la ilaha illahu. None has the right to be worshipped but he, which means that only Allah has a right to be worshipped. Here the word Allah is his personal name, which means he who is capable of everything and free from all defects, real and true God. Because all other lords are baseless, false, and fabricated. Allah is alone. No one is like him. Allahu la ilaha illahu negates all other types of worship. It has been said there is no God except Allah. Now the two characteristics Al-Hayyu and Al-Khayyum is Al-Hayyu, the one attributed with life that is unlike of our life. Al-Qayyum, the one who will remain always. So here this uh, thing is clear that whatever is not Al-Hayy and was uh, not always present, but people have created idols out of marble, stone or wood as their lord or by pouring molten metal into a mold to create an idol. They are not worthy of the title of the lord when put to the test according to the standards of Hayyu and Qayyum. 
Apart from Allah, all other gods are false. They never have been and never will always be. Whoever is not Qayyum, who will not remain always, how can that be the Lord? Example, some have made their Lord to the Messenger of Allah. Now he is not in this world. And when he was not born before that also he was not in this world. If someone has made any person his Lord and he has died and is in the grave or will live his normal life and will die, then he cannot be a Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only deserves to be called as Lord because he was from the beginning and will always remain. He is Al-Hayyu Al-Qayyum. In the ayah, there are some defects of human nature. Allah is pure from them. La ta'khudhu sinatun wa la naum. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. Slumbering and sleep is also a weakness in the state of sleep. The senses doesn't oh, the senses don't work. A sleeping person cannot see, cannot listen, cannot touch anything with hands. In fact, whatever is in the hands fa- uh, fall down when he sleeps. Sleep is an indication of unmindfulness and slumber is the starting stage of sleep. Every living ne- a living being needs sleep, whether they are plants or animals and trees. When People are exhausted, they sleep. This is a defect and weakness. Allah is pure from these weaknesses. Sleep and slumber is against the stature of Allah. After this, it is being said in Ayat al-Kursi, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ To him alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Allah is the owner of all the treasures of the world. The owner will be the one who, who, who was present before the existence of this world. The false Lord whom whom people have made came into existence after the creation of the world. That is why it has been said, whatever is in the heavens and on the earth belongs to Allah. Now one, uh, now one more evidence is being given that heaven, earth and whatever is in them belongs to Allah. So only the creator and the owner can be the Lord and the one who is not the owner nor the creator cannot be the Lord. He himself is under somebody's ownership and somebody's creation and cannot be called an ilah lord then it has been said so is he that uh, that can intercede him except with his permission here the intercede mention can be for worldly affairs and for hereafter actually the, the faith of mushriki namakka was that their idols lat manat uzza angels and pious people the messengers whose idols they have made used to say that the people will intercede with Allah. They will give their recommendation and save them from the wrath of Allah. This belief of theirs was based on shirk. Here, it has been said that only uh, only that person can intercede whom Allah will permit. And for whom he will do this will also be the, de- the decision of Allah. This authority is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that who will do and for whom he will do and intercede for what. Without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody will be able to do. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ He knows what is in front and what is at the back. Here front means present and future and back means past. Allah is completely familiar with everyone's past and present. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ Nobody can imagine the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the knowledge is given to someone, then only the amount of knowledge which Allah wants to give. Here also this has been explained with proof that how can anyone interfere in Allah's works? All of the universe's creations are under Allah's control. When nobody has the knowledge, how can they run the universe and understand the experience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whereas nobody has that knowledge which Allah has, whether they are human beings, jinns or angels or any other creation, everybody, uh, everybody's knowledge is baseless and limited. The knowledge of humans is only which Allah gave to the prophets through his wahi or what they have learned themselves through experiments. The knowledge of humans is just a drop of water in comparison to Allah's knowledge. Allah's knowledge encompasses all the oceans and humans' knowledge is knowledge one drop. His throne extends over the heaven and the earth, and Allah feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving it. And He is the Most High, the Most Great. Here it has been said, Allah's kursi, dominion, knowledge, talent, and greatness has buried within Himself, within Him, the whole of sky and the earth. 
Allah's domain uh, embraces all around the sky and the earth and it's not hard for him to guard them he does not get tired in guarding them it has been said that kursi in front of Allah's throne is the place of his foot seven uh, heavens and seven earth are so small in front of Allah's kursi just like putting a ring in the desert desert is like a kursi so big and seven skies and earth are so small like a ring Allah is most and he is the most high the most great in this great ayah which is known as ayatul kursi the greatness of Allah has been explained in a very eloquent way if by seeing Allah's creations and knowing his greatness one does not accept accept islam that means he could not get through allah that means he is not on the religion based on the law of nature tafsir of verse number 256 a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim la ikraha fid din qad tabayyana ar rushd min al ghayy fa man yakfur bit taghudi wa yu'min billahi faqad istamsaka bil urwati al wuthqa Translation, there is no compulsion in religion. True guidance has been made clearly distinct from error. Therefore, whoever renounces Tawud, forces of shaitan, and believes in Allah has grasped the firm handhold that will never break. Allah, whose handhold you have grasped, hears all and knows all. Tafsir. According to this ayah, if a person does not wish to adopt Islam, he cannot be forced to do so because Allah has not approved of it. This ayah was revealed when the parents of certain children who had raised them as Jews or Christians wanted them to revert to Islam as they had accepted Islam, but their children who were grown up now refused. And some scholars say that there is a provision in this ayah for the people of the book that it is not compulsory to become Muslims in order to stay in a Muslim country. They could live in a Muslim country as a non-Muslim after paying jizya, meaning they can be forced or to accept Islam. Jizya means tax. This ayah is applicable until the end of this world and no one should be forced to accept Islam. Remember, we studied in the last class, right, that Allah has made clear guidance from his guidance. He has explained the differences between both extremes. Allah has given each and every person free will and authority to, de uh, to decide whether he wants to adopt a way of guidance or go astray on the false path. So this is the test of this world as to which way each person chooses by his or her, her own free will. The first thing that is said in this ayat is la, la ikraha fid din. There is no compulsion in religion. We have been told about Allah in Ayat al-Kursi earlier and also in Surah Fatiha, the grandeur, supremacy and greatness of Allah, His complete knowledge, His ways, His brilliance and His oneness. Now it is incumbent upon every person that he ponders over the verses and that he or she recognizes Allah. The next level after recognition is that of love and after that obedience, meaning that Allah has told mankind to think over his verses and then decide what his heart feels like doing. Meaning, if a person believes after realization, accepts what his heart says, accepts Allah, accepts his sayings and acts upon each and every command of his, then it is excellent. He is a believer. But if someone does not want to believe, he should not be forced because the seed of faith is found in the heart. When it is in the heart only, then will the branches of deeds flourish and flower. The light of faith emancipates from the heart, right? So if there is no faith in the right uh, in the heart and one is made to recite the kalima forcefully, the deeds won't change. What will happen instead? Yes, each and every deed of his will be filled with hypocrisy. This is worse than disbelief, right? This is the uh, very reason that a hypocrite uh, that a hypocrite will be in the lowest pit of hell. That's why no person should disheartedly accept Islam, nor should anyone be forced to do so. However, once a person becomes a Muslim, it is a punishable crime to go outside the boundaries of Islam. Further, in the ayat, it is said, It is very uh, easy to act on religion as the Quran has been revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then he sallallahu alayhi wa has explained what we should do and what we should not do. Ignorance, guidance, misguidance and what things can take us to hell, everything has been explained. Then it is said, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالتَّوْغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ 
Whoever shall reject the Taqwood and believe in one God, فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى في صوم لها. Then he has held a strong hold. That he, that is, he has held a strong support. Let us first understand what is the meaning of Taqwood. Taqwood is every belief regarding any power other than Allah that takes a person towards misguidance, under the influence of which a person turns towards transgressions. The disobedience of Allah by passing the boundary set by Allah. On the other hand, a person who does not support the transgressing powers and negates them, rejects the Taqwood and takes the support of Allah alone, then comes under the protection of Allah and Allah protects him. Let us now learn about false supporters. What are they? False supporters are those from whom we ask what we should ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person asks something from someone that he or she is in position of, then it is not asking from a false supporter because Allah has created us a means whereby people are, help, are able to help one another. However, if a person asks from someone that which only Allah gives, then asking such things from any person is shirk. For instance, a child should be asked for from Allah alone because it is He who gives children. No one other than Allah can give us children. Similarly, for provision, we should ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For business, we should ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for health, we should ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah provides that means. Sometimes a doctor and sometimes a hakim are needed, but a shifa cure should be requested from Allah alone. Asking from a living pious person or from a pious person in the grave, from angels or from stones, some ask from Isa, uh, some from Uzair, all this is shirk. All these supposed uh, supporters have been described in the Quran as the weak support of the house of the spider. If you touch the web of a spider, obviously you will not get any support, right? Instead, it will cling to your hands. Instead of all of them, the support of Allah is as if a person had held a strong hold. When you travel in a bus and you hold on to the round hand uh, hold uh, that is located above which is fixed firmly in the bus. Then the person doesn't fall in the moving bus. When a person holds a handle or railing when climbing, that is also a support. This is just for understanding that likewise the support of Allah is strong, fixed and firm. Lam alaha. That never breaks, never cracks. It means that Allah never leaves his slave uncared for, unattended, miserable, unaided, troubled or hopeless. A true moment never dispays of the despair of the mercy of Allah. How do we know that a person has lost all hopes of the mercy of Allah and that he has become desperate? Yes, when he leaves Allah and starts seeking help from other than Allah, he asks others to ex- ex- exorcise him, blow upon him, get a taviz or a talisman from him, go to a daraga, prostrate and ask at the graves or ask a living peer to give him a child, heal him, cure him from disease or start a profitable br- business. A sign that a person has held on tightly to the stronghold of Allah, Allah is that he never complains, never expresses grievances to other people. He doesn't worry, doesn't feel desperate, hopeless or sad. He remains resigned to the will of Allah. He depends on Allah alone, adheres to the Quran and Sunnah only. Further strengthening his relation with Allah, he abides by each and every command of Allah. He doesn't leave out what he finds difficult from the commands of Allah while doing only those that he finds easy. And he doesn't leave doing good deeds when difficulties come to him. We can earn a strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only by abiding uh, by the Quran and Sunnah. A person gains a strong connection with Allah that doesn't break only by holding on firmly to the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. And at the end of the ayah, we have Allah hears and knows everything. If a person associates anyone with Allah, innovates something in religion or asks anything from those who are in the graves or or from a living sage, whether openly or secretly, Allah knows everything. He hears everything. He knows what you are asking from others. And if you ask from him, he knows that too and doesn't leave your invocation unanswered. Or if one asks from a self-designed God, then too Allah knows what shirk you are doing and that you have lost hope with regards to the mercy of Allah and leaving hope for the mercy of Allah is kufr, disbelief. He knows those uh, in whose hearts there is iman, faith, and those in whose hearts there is kufr, in whose hearts there is nifaq, in whose hearts there is shirk. We pray that Allah may save us from all kinds of shirk and nifaq. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. 
تفسير of verse number 257 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون Translation, Allah is the wali protector of those who believe. He brings them out of the depth of darkness and leads them into the light. As for the unbelievers or disbelievers, as for the disbelievers whose wali protector is Taghut, forces of shaitan, he takes them out of the light and leads them into the depths of darkness. As a result, they will become the companions of the hellfire and shall live therein forever. Tafsir, in the previous ayah, we learnt that the support of Allah is the only strong support that we can have. In this ayah, we are informed that those fortunate ones who have this support, so what are the attributes and qualities that they possess to be blessed? Thus, yes, let us see. First of all, it is said, Allahu waliyyul ladheena amanu. Allah is the friend of those who believe in Him consciously. Allah is the friend and helper of the these possessors of Iman. Their Iman is an enlightened, conscious Iman. A coerced Iman cannot be a conscious Iman. Meaning, this Iman is the one that emerges from a happily agreeing heart. It emerges from the heart. Its seed is sown in the heart. From there, its branches spread and blossomed. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ such, as, uh, im, such an iman that is a conscious iman takes a person out of kufr, shirk, bidat, customs and traditions, ignorance, darkness, the darkness of blindly following the ancestors and takes him towards the light of hidayah, guidance. That is, it takes a person to the path of jannah, removes him from shirk and takes him to tawheed. This iman or belief makes him walk on the straight path. Where do we get this nur of iman, light of faith from? Yes, we get it from the Quran and Hadith. The knowledge of Quran and Hadith is learned. Each and every order is followed. And then this knowledge of Quran and Hadith purifies a person's soul, cleanses a person's heart, scratches out the diseases of the heart like grudge, animosity, hatred, jealousy, envy, and misconceptions, uh, misconceptions, cleanses a person inside out, instills in him or her the love for Allah, and then the person starts racing towards the path of Jannah. When the person with conscious faith starts walking on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, the, the straight path, the path to Jannah, then such a believer is tried and tested at each and every instance of his life. But the light of faith in his heart doesn't let him, because uh, le le doesn't let him become dis desperate and hopeless. His faith in Allah goes on increasing. He doesn't complain to anyone. He has complete faith in Allah. He has positive hopes in Allah, and Allah also rewards him, uh, rewards him as per the level of his faith. He doesn't let him wander. He doesn't let him fall. He saves him from sins, and Allah gives him the ability to be patient at times of tests and trials. Allah places patience and tranquility in his heart, keeps holding him, doesn't let him fall, and aids him. Furthermore, it is said, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاؤُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتُ يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ now there is mention of those who do not believe. They do not take Allah as a friend. Instead they take Taghut, transgressing shayateen devils as friends and they place their trust in their deities. These are weak supports that beautify ignorance, deviation, associating partners with Allah and disbelief and prevent them from having complete faith in Allah. Disbelievers, weak supports, hinder guidance and lead to ignorance. They become involved in shirk, bidat and sins, losing hope for Allah's mercy. Their, their hopes are attached to false gods and deities, focusing on pleasing them and their love. Allah alone deserves love, dedication and worship, whereas they are devoted to their deities. It is said that those who consider false gods as their friends will be the companions of hellfire. It will be a dreadful ending. They will abide therein forever. 
in today's ayahs after the introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the statement of Allah being the ever living, the sustainer of all existence, there is mention of the light of a believer and the darkness and ignorance of a disbeliever. Now in ayah 258, the qualities of Allah of being the ever living, the sustainer, his grandeur, his magnificence and his divine power have been explained through some instances. The first instance has been taken from the instances of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Nimrud. Namrud had rejected the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the ever living, the sustainer. And the second instance is of Prophet Uzair alayhi salam who was made to witness the fact of the dead being brought to life. And Allah granted him complete faith in the reality of resurrection after death. In the same ayah, Allah enumerates his qualities of being the ever living and the sustainer through the incident of his giving life to a dead animal. Tafsir of verse number 258. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Alam tara ila alladhi hajj Ibrahim fi rabbihi an atahu Allahu al-mulk. Idh qala Ibrahim rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumit. Qala ana uhyi wa umit. Qala Ibrahim fa inna Allah yati bil-shamsi min al-mashriq fa ati biha min al-maghrib fa buhit alladhi kafar. Wallahu la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimeen. Translation, have you ever reflected upon the one Namrud to whom Allah had given a kingdom who argued with Ibrahim alayhi salam about his Rabb? When Ibrahim said, my Rabb is he who has power to give life and to cause death, he replied, I too have the power to give life and to cause death. Ibrahim said, well, Allah causes the sun to rise from the east, just make it rise from the west. Uh, from the west. Thus, the unbeliever was confounded. Allah does not guide the evildoers. Tafsir. Here, firstly, we are told, Alam tara ila alladhi hajj Ibrahim fi rabbihi an atahu Allahu al-mulk. Have you not seen the one who disputed with Ibrahim? Who was this person? He was the king of Iraq. Namrud. The entire community was mushrik and he had proclaimed himself God. Come, let us first understand what kind of shirk he had involved his community in. His subjects were doing. The first kind of shirk is shirk fi rububiyyat, associating partnership in the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabb means the creator of the heavens, earth, sun, moon and stars, the controller of the universe, the provider of the vegetation from the earth. No one does such an associ uh, association in partnership to Allah. No one says he is controlling the sun, moon, stars and the entire universe, producing vegetation, growing trees, meaning be it Namrud or Fir'aun or the polytheists of Makkah. No one did this kind of polytheism because even prior to, uh, to, to their births, heavens uh, and earth were already existent. Cosmos was existing. The earth was growing crops. So no one claimed a partnership with Allah with regards to these matters. The other kind of shirk is Fissifat. There are two kinds of this too. Number one, Ma Fawqal Fitri Asbab, meaning the one who hears and accepts invocations. Uh, removes problems, gives food, sends rain, bestows offspring. This is the first kind. Ma fawqal fitri asbab. And they think that these false gods, dead or alive, or the wali, awliya, can give them all these things. Hence, they even prostrate, worship, give offerings to them. And the mushrik of Makkah also used to do all this shirk. And even in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, some Muslims are involved in, the, in these kinds of shirk. The second is shirk in fitri asbab. In this, people are made to follow the taghut. People are made to accept and adhere to their rulings in opposition to Allah's. This dominion is known as iqtidare ala, sovereign supremacy in today's world. Both legal as well as political sovereignty is included in this. Through them, the laws of Allah are transgressed. Their own laws are established instead of the laws of Allah. Such a sovereignty was established by Firaun too and Namrud too. Hence it is said, Alam tara ila alladhi. Did you not see? Namrud, the king, uh, is the one who intended here. He would make people follow his laws, rules and regulations instead of Allah's. No one was allowed to speak ill of him. It is said, Hajj Ibrahim fi rabbihi an adahu Allahu al-mulk. Namrud, to whom Allah had given kingship, argued with Ibrahim al-Islam in the courtroom about his provider and sustainer. 
father of Ibrahim alayhi salam Azar was a close ally of Namrud and making and selling idols was his occupation. When Ibrahim alayhi salam broke the idols that were at the place of worship, his father himself presented his case in the court of Namrud. He was also among those who had put Ibrahim alayhi salam in the fire and had brought wood for that fire. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam was saved from the fire, he drove him out of his house. Now let us see what the dispute was between Namrud and Ibrahim in the court when his father presented him there. Ibrahim said, إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي الَّذِي يُحْيِي My Lord is He who gives life and causes death. Meaning that He gives life as well as death. That is, He introduced Him to one Allah invited Him as well as the courtiers to Tawheed. قَالَ أَنَا أُحْيِي وَأُمِيت Namrud said, I give life and cause death. Since Namrud had claimed lordship as God, he claimed that he could give life and what he meant was that since he was the king, he had the authority to decree the death sentence to anyone he chose. And was there anyone who could question him about it? And he had the authority to set free any criminal murderer out of his own free will. So he thought he could give life and take life away. Although Ibrahim was not talking about using means to give life and death. Instead, he was talking about creation and natural death, saying that life and death are in the hands of Allah. Natural death is in the hands of Allah. It is said that Namrud asked for an innocent person who had not committed any crime and decreed the death sentence for him. Then he asked for a criminal for whom a death sentence had been declared and released him, setting them scot-free. And then he said, See, I do have the authority to do these works. Life and death are in my hands too. Ibrahim al -Islam could have asked him to bring the dead man back to life, but he did not argue further in this respect, switching on the topic of Rububiyat, Lordship. Ibrahim alayhi salam said to Namrud, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ Verily, Allah brings the sun from the east, then you bring it from the west. فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرُ Namrud knew that he couldn't control the universe, so this was beyond his capacity, so he became silent, speechless and amazed. Thus Ibrahim alayhi salam made it clear to him and all the people in the court that their Rabb, provider, sustainer was not Namrud, instead Allah was the true Lord of the entire universe. Though Namrud had become speechless, he could not tolerate giving up his proclamation of being God himself and he did not consider giving a thought to the argument of Ibrahim alayhi salam. No, he didn't do that. Wallahu la yahdil zalimin And Allah does not guide the wrongdoers. Namrud had transgressed in associating partners with Allah and was in no way ready to accept Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. He did not want to emerge from the darkness of self-worship into the light of truth. Allah is saying that Allah does not guide such wrongdoing people. Instead of Tawhud, had Namrud made Allah his friend, then he would have definitely turned a believer after the explanation of Ibrahim salam, and Allah would have opened the path of guidance to him, right? But he is called Zalim, oppressor. Why? Because he didn't want to believe and lose his self-created superfluous world. He did not want that. Tafsir of verse number 259. Translation or take another example of the one prophet, uh, prophet Isra Uzair who passed by a town which had fallen down upon its roofs. He exclaimed, How can Allah bring this dead township back to life? Thereupon Allah caused him to die and after 100 years brought him back to life. Allah asked, How long did you remain here? Ezra replied, Perhaps a day or part of a day. Allah said, No, nay, you have remained here for 100 years. Now just have a look at your food and drink. They are not rotten and they look 
and then look at your donkey and see that his very bones have decayed we have done this to make you a sign for the mankind look at the bones of your donkey how we bring them together then clothe them with flesh and bring him back to life when this all was shown clearly to him he said now i know that allah has power over everything tafsir in this verse number 259 and in the verse 260 that follows it allah has disclosed those incidents that he had unfolded to two of his close and special bondsmen namely the reality of resurrection after death as an experimental experience in this world itself and thus made them a sign for the world to see aw kallazi marra ala qaryatin wa hiya khawiyatun ala urushiha or like the one who passed by a town that was lying upside down on its roof in ruins here it is stated that a man passed by a city it is understood that this man this person was uzair alayhi salam some say that it was armia alayhi salam but as per the opinion of most of the companions of prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and their followers it was uzair alayhi salam who had memorized the entire tawrah when uh, when rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam attacked Sham Syria and ruined Jerusalem he took a lot of Jews as prisoners of war it is said that Uzair alayhi salam was also among them some time later they became free when they were passing by the city that was ruined by Bakht Nazar it was in ruins people were dead and uh, uh, and the roofs and the walls of the village fall into ground قال ان يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها من عزير عليه السلام saw the city he wondered how allah would resurrect it at that time he had some food with him and was seated on a donkey the moment this thought came to his mind allah took away his soul fa amatahu allah 100 عام ثم بعثه allah kept him dead for 100 years before resurrecting him قال كم لبست قال لبست يوما او بعض يوم meaning allah made him dead for 100 years and thereafter brought him back to life and asked him how long did you remain in the state uzair al islam had no means of counting so he made a guess and replied that he must have stayed so for a day or part of a day because generally a person doesn't sleep for longer than that right allah wanted to make him understand how long he had remained asleep fanzur ila ta'amika wa sharabika lam yatasanna Allah asked him to to have a look at his food and drink it had not been spoiled he himself was completely and absolutely fine so he thought that it was the same day and he had only slept for some time and look at your donkey because even its bones uh, had rotten wanzur ila himarik and look at your donkey because even its bones had rotten when uzair alayhi salam saw the bones of the donkey he understood that uh, that years had passed thus allah made him witness one more visual experience wanzur ila al-'idhami kayfa nunshizuha thumma naksuha lahma then allah said look at these bones of your donkey how we fix them and cover them with flesh he was told in front of uzair alayhi salam allah commanded the bones to assemble and they began to do so with his own eyes he saw them stirring and merging together then the skeletons of bones began to grow flesh on them and the donkey sprang to life as he was watching then he turned his gaze to the town about which he had worried how it would come to life and it too thrived فلما تبين له قال اعلم ان الله على كل شيء قدير so after all became clear to him uzair al hisalam replied now i know well that allah has power over all and everything he stated that he believed allah would resurrect everyone on the day of resurrection but after witnessing it with his own eyes he gained a definite belief based on definite knowledge he stated joyfully that he now thoroughly understood that allah had complete power over all things this incident was followed by a number of miracles for as allah has stated he provides signs Hazrat Uzair alayhi salam uh, himself the dead people of the city and the donkey were all resurrected this was a great miracle when Uzair alayhi salam reached his home 
His sons and grandsons had all grown old, and Uzair alayhi salam was young. So it was also a miracle for all of them that he was young when even his grandsons had grown old. Based on this fact alone, a group of Jews started calling him the son of God. Uzair alayhi salam woke up after a hundred years. His donkey transformed from bones to flesh. The dead town was resurrected, and all this happened in front of his own eyes. These were all miracles that strengthened Uzair alayhi salam's faith. further tafsir of verse number 260 مدعهن يأتينك سعيا وعلم أن الله عزيز حكيم Translation Yet another example is when Ibrahim alayhi salam said My Rabb, show me how you give life to the dead He replied, have you no faith in this? Ibrahim humbly submitted Yes, but I ask this to reassure my heart. Allah said, Take four birds, train them to follow your direction, cut their bodies into pieces and scatter those pieces on hilltops, then call them back. Allah will bring them back to life and they will come to you right away. Thus you will know that Allah is all-powerful and wise. Tafsir In this ayah, Ibrahim alayhi salam too is inquiring just as Uzair alayhi salam had inquired as to how Allah will resurrect the dead. Let us see what the reason for this query was. It is the nature of man that until he witnesses something with his own eyes or sees something happening with his own eyes, he remains divided in his thoughts. Sometimes thinking this way and sometimes thinking that way. No matter how firmly he believes in the happening of the event, at some point in time or another, he, this thought does come to mind. How will Allah resurrect us? You too must have had such a thought. Yes, hence this thought of Ibrahim a.s. was not the result of any doubt he had. He had complete and firm faith in the words, uh, works of Allah. But he wanted to see it with his own eyes and satisfy his curiosity so that he could state in front of Namrud that he had seen it with his own eyes. Thus, he wanted to strengthen his knowledge with proof so that it would arise from the depths of his heart and affect the listeners' hearts. Remember that there were a lot of courtiers there along with Namrud. Hence, in the beginning of this verse, it is said, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى And when Ibrahim a.s. said, O oh my Rabb, show me how you will resurrect the dead. Allah said, قَالْ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Do you not have faith? The fact is that prophets have firm beliefs as compared to other people. They have revelations coming to them, Jibreel al-Islam coming to them. But it is very important for a person who invites others to the truth that he witnesses it with his own eyes, that he has a vision of certainty so that he can inform people that he has seen it with his own eyes and can speak with a strong conviction. Allah makes prophets observe and experience things so that they have the vision of certainty. Uzair al-Islam was also made a witness Likewise, Allah made Musa alayhi salam also witness the resurrection of 70 dead people. Isa alayhi salam too was a witness to it as he could resurrect dead people by the command of Allah. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was shown heaven and hell at the time of Miraj. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was shown the punishments of hell and the bounties of heaven. Then we have Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Why not? I do believe. I have faith. But I want to witness so that my heart is at rest and I can speak firmly based on definite certain knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, Take four birds, pet them, then allow them to become acquainted with yourself. Create a bond with them so that when you call them, they come to you. You recognize them and you do not become confused in differentiating them from other birds. Then cut them up in pieces, minced, so that they are indistinguishable and place a portion on each mountain. Then call them. They will come running to you. Here it is not said that they will come to you flying. According to Hazrat Hassan, Raziallahu narration in Tafsir Ru Al-Mani, 
Ibrahim al Islam did exactly what he was told, and when he called them, everything returned to its former shape, bone to bone, feather to feather, flesh to flesh, and the birds came alive and ran to Ibrahim al Islam. Allah Almighty said, O oh Ibrahim, this is how on the day of resurrection I shall assemble in no time all parts and bodies and breathe life into them, meaning that all the bones and body parts will accumulate, whether they are in graves or in seas or rivers, or whether they're pieces or remnants or wherever they are, and a new human being will be produced here the word is stated which means they will come running why isn't it said they will come flying because if they came flying across the sky doubt would remain if our sight missed them and replaced them by some other birds at uh, some uncontrollable miss mini second of time now if they came running on the ground they would be in sight all along the way through this event Allah Almighty made Ibrahim Islam see an instance of life after death, witnessing resurrection, which helped resolve through visual experience all doubts expressed by polytheists and disbelievers. Actually, the polytheists and disbelievers, the deniers of truth, had this as a strong argument. A person becomes dust in the grave after death, and somewhere this dust is scattered away by wind. In some cases, it is carried away by water. Minute particles spread out far and wide. Sometimes a person is burned to death to such an extent that even the bones are burned. So how will these ashes or dispersed particles come together on the day of resurrection, and how will life be put into them? All of this is not at all possible, and so Allah has described extensively that it is not at all difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do all of these. Collecting these dust particles, then reproducing humans or birds, etc., is not at all difficult for him due to his absolute power and control on everything. And by the way, making something for the first time is difficult, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even that is not difficult. He just says the word kun, that is be, and it becomes. Alhamdulillah, a tafsir for today is completed. Recap now let us see what all we have learned from today's verses for our actions. Ayah number 253. We should not reject any prophet because rejecting any one prophet is akin to rejecting all the prophets. We should not elevate one prophet over another prophet because only Allah has authority to do so. And we should ourselves study the Quran and Hadith with an open heart and act upon them. We should not act upon heresies. What happens when one doesn't have knowledge of Hadith? Well, then the person says, this is from the Quran, this is from the Hadith, while he himself has not studied them and the listener thinks that maybe that is so. That is why we should study ourselves. Ayah number 254, we learn from this verse that we should dedicate our wealth, time, skills and energies, whatever resources and means Allah has given us for the works pleasing to Allah and for the eminence and supremacy of our religion because they will benefit us in the hereafter only if we use them to gain the pleasure of Allah and for the supremacy of the religion as relatives, friends, recommendations will be of no benefit to us on that day. Ayah number 255, we should recite Ayat al-Kursi before retiring to bed because when we recite Ayat al-Kursi before going to sleep at night, a guardian angel stays by us throughout the night and no devils are able, uh, are able to approach us until morning. We should recite Ayat al-Kursi after every obligatory salah as there is nothing except death that can stop a person who recites it after fard salah, obligatory prayer from entering Jannah. Though Aytul, through Ayat al-Kursi, we get to know and understand the greatness and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we are able to obey Allah as we ought to. Ayah number 256, we shouldn't force anyone to accept Islam. However, if one accepts Islam, he should enter it wholly and completely and leaving Islam is not permissible. If he leaves Islam, then death penalty becomes applicable for him. Hence, it can be pronounced by a Muslim country's ruler or judge. Hazrat Umar once invited a Christian lady to Islam. She said, Ana ajuzul, uh, I am an old lady and death is near to me. Why should I accept Islam? Upon hearing that, Umar did not force her to accept Islam. He instead recited this very verse, La ikraha fiddin. There is no compulsion in religion. From this ayah, we learned that we should not worship anything or any power other than Allah. We should depend only on Allah because the aids in this world break, get lost, cheat and blaspheme. And many times, instead of all of these, the support of Allah is such that a person has held a strong hold. 
Ayat 257 We have to believe consciously with understanding so that Allah becomes our helping friend and the way to guidance in Jannah becomes easy for us. Ayah number 258 Life and death are in the hands of Allah. We have to protect ourselves from every kind of innovation and polytheism so that the way to guidance becomes easy for us. Ayah number 259 Allah made his prophets witnesses visually and convinced them that Allah will definitely resurrect people after they are dead and that Allah has power over everything. Ayah number 260 Allah strengthens the knowledge of the prophets by making them witness facts so that after seeing with their own eyes the prophets hearts are at rest so that they can inform those who deny the truth and resurrection after death by stating that they have witnessed it themselves. Homework please note down today's homework question number 1 write down the translation root words and singular plural from today's verses question number 2 make the past tense fel madi present tense fel mudare and mas- masadar verbal nouns of the following root words in bab e tafil number 1 ba lam ghain number 2 sad dal qaf number 3 seen ba ha number 4 Qaf, Ba, Ra, Number 5, Kaf, Lam, Meem, Number 6, Ha, Ra, Fa. Question number 3, What did you understand by the following part of verse 253? Tilka al-Rusulu faddalna ba'adahum ala ba'ad. And what did you learn from it? How will you implement it? Question number 4, part of ayah 253 walaw sha allahu maqtatal alladhina min ba'dihim and if allah had willed succeeding generations would not have fought against each other why does allah not force people to follow his guidance question number 5 what is the meaning of risk provision what things can we spend in the way of allah ayah number 254 question number 6 which three things will not avail us on the day of qiyamah standing so what have you learned that can be put to practice from ayah number 254 Question number 7 write one hadith stating the superiority of ayatul kursi from ayah number 255 Question number 8 state the four attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the light of ayatul kursi which attribute impacted you the most and why from ayah number 255 Question number 9 la ikraha fid din there is no compulsion in religion what does it mean to have no compulsion in religion what did you understand from this part of the ayah number 256 question number 10 wal ladina kafaru awliya'uhum at-taghut what is at-taghut what are the drawbacks of following the taghut ayah number 257 Question number 11 Allah is the guardian protecting friend of the believers he removes them from darkness and brings them to light what does darkness mean here and what is light question number 12 with whom did ibrahim alayhi salam have an argument and what was it about and which fact surprised him ayah number 258 Question number 13 For what reasons did the incident which happened with Uzair alayhi salam become a miracle for others from ayah number 259 Question number 14 What did Allah make Ibrahim alayhi salam observe and what was the wisdom behind it from verse number 216 Alhamdulillah by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have finished the lesson may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all perseverance in the religion and make us learn understand practice and convey the Quran to others in the best way amen take care of yourselves may Allah forgive any mistakes that has been done in uh, presenting the lesson سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته